Kusu Zampula, economic stimulus plan, a discussion that we would like to bring on uh, tonight uh, for all our viewers, as you must have already watched our Zonka session, economic st stimulus plan, its benefits, the way it's going to be implemented, what are the expectations that people would f have from this economic stimulus plan, budget, the kind of uh, allotment that uh, government is going to come up with. These are some of the areas that we have touched upon and we would like to uh, rediscuss or focus on some of the points that we have already discussed and maybe digress uh, to some other points that would be somehow associated to this plan as well. But the question here is, right from the outset, when our economy is growing so well, do we need to stimulate growth? What is going to happen if we stimulate growth? with 5 billion grant that we have received from, uh, we are going to receive from government of India, which has already been assured, but uh, as said earlier by the Secretary General of uh, People's Democratic Party, money is going to come uh, sometime in end of October. With this, uh, let me introduce my guests. I have Mr. Sunam Jamso, who is the Secretary General of People's Democratic Party, Mr. Kim Gatsaring, Honorable Member of Parliament, and uh, Mr. Kim Jong Topge, Associate Director from DHL. Thank you, all of you. We actually wished and hoped that uh, some of the stakeholders would come up for the discussion so that the discussions become more interactive. But as informed already in our Zonka session and as people already watched in Zonka session, three of you have been coming up with lots of inputs and uh, we have to carry forward uh, with the same uh, uh, energy. Well, to start with, uh, we would also like to inform all our viewers that uh, we are keeping our phone lines open. If you have any substantive suggestions, opinions, or questions to the panelists, or even to the government, or any other stakeholders, please feel free to call us and introduce yourself and share your views. Start with, uh, to start with, let me ask, uh, ask Mr. Sunam Jamsola. Now, one of the concerns raised during this session, the, during the last session, uh, was that do we need to stimulate economic growth when it's growing so much? Now, you, this title itself says that you're going to stimulate the economy. Why stimulate? Or are you just trying to ease some of the problems that our economy is facing rather than stimulating growth? How do you look at it? Uh, let's thank you, though. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank everybody and also would like to wish Kuzu Zangpo to everybody. Uh, this economic stimulus plan came up during the election time, campaign time, rather. During the campaign, we went around meeting people and uh, basically to find their uh, uh, problems, to understand what problems they have, and then also to uh, understand their hopes and aspirations. And during that time, time and again, everywhere, like one of the biggest problems our people were facing was because of the rupee problem and also because of uh, they were not able to get loans la, for yes. business, also for many other purposes. So there was a, a, there was an urgent need to do something about it. La. So as a political party, uh, it was our uh, I mean, like it was our goal, and it was also our uh, aim to find a solution to that problem. La. So in that way, in that sense, we came up with this short-term plan. It is a short-term plan. Our economy needs uh, a long-term. Uh, structural change also, a lot of changes are required there also. But in the immediate short term, we need uh, to do something about all these problems that people are facing. So that's why we came up with this economic stimulus plan. And, um, and uh, the good news is that the government of India has very kindly agreed to uh, commit it to, to give us this uh, uh, fund for that. And it's especially also because we would like to thank His Majesty the King um, because of his, like, uh, because of their uh, you know, hard work, yes. that we have such a good relationship with India, and that we could get this uh, budget that we needed for that. Yes. Uh, with regard to the economy, now, though, when you say that economy is growing so well, I think there is a little misconception there. In the last uh, few years, I think uh, uh, the economy has been going, growing between. Uh, GDP has been growing between 8 and 9 percent. But uh, if you look at the recent statistics, uh, in 2012, it, it grew at the rate of only 4.62 percent. So it has really dropped almost half. 
30% drop is there. So, I mean, we can't uh, really say that the economy is growing so well. Now, I think, uh, so that's why now uh, for the government, I think uh, I would like to ag again from the outset uh, mention that I come here on my personal capacity to share my opinions and views. And is it true that uh, you authored this economic stimulus plan? This is what I was made to believe. Then. Yes. Uh, I was one of the task force members yes. in the uh, PDP. We had an economic development task force, and I was one of the members, so I was involved in it. So yes. uh, that's why I know all this background. Yes, um, so uh, that's why, I mean, like, in terms of GDP growth, we have already come down. So that's why I think we have to be concerned. And if you look at the economy right now, I think there are many uh, problems, like, actually. Yes. And, and I think we need a short-term economic stimulus plan like this. But in the long run, I think we need a lot more uh, a long-term plan in terms of fiscal and monetary policy uh, to, yes. to, to, to bring some fundamental changes in the economy. Yes. Yes, Mr. King Kingasaring, now, uh, are you worried about uh, the sustainability of this uh, economic stimulus plan? Uh, Mr. Swam James kept on mentioning that this is just a short-term measure or this is just an immediate measure that government is coming up with just to, say, rescue the economy that uh, is in current shape. Are you worried oh. about its dura durability? Yes. Uh, absolutely, la. we are a little concerned. Um, I think uh, going back on how the whole plan has evolved, uh, even the Pinsum Sokpa, we had our own, what you call the, at that point in time, the economic action plan. Uh, because as you rightly pointed out, we were of the opinion that the economy was heating up. And if you look at all the statistics, for example, the construction sector grew by over 14% from 2010 to 2011. The hotel industry grew by over 50 to 40 to 54%. Uh, uh, over the uh, just period of a year, and so has financial sector and so on. So I think uh, at that point in time, before the uh, 2012 GDP figure had come out, all the indicators where the economy was really heating up. So therefore, but at the same time, I think the uh, practical problems of uh, you know having access to, to loans, the liquidity crunch in the banks, and then also having problems uh, you know uh, with, the, with the rupee issue, I think that, uh, that has been recognized. Uh, as, as I think uh, Mr. Kinzang has mentioned in the earlier session, because of the balance of payment issue, we are simply importing more than what we are exporting. So therefore, that is uh, fundamentally the, the uh, long-term problem that we have to solve. So therefore, I think whatever plan that you came up, for example, in the uh, all version of the economic action plan, we had a drawn-out action plan over the next five years, where the stimulus or the action plan of, uh, in our case, it was about 7.8.79 billion uh, new term that would be integrating with the five-year plan budget of the 11 five-year plan. So therefore, I think we have to make sure that this plan is sustainable. Whatever we're injecting now, it has to be targeted. Whatever we're injecting now, it has to uh, be sustainable in the long run, uh, not just to ease the current uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, crunches that you're having in, in whichever sector, but also at the same time, uh, I think we have to make sure that uh, uh, the, the immediate need is felt in the construction sector, immediate uh, necessity is felt in the transportation sector, which is contributing to over 10% of the GDP. So therefore, we feel that it has to be an economic action plan, integrated action plan, not neglecting some of the areas which we feel that the current economic uh, stimulus plan is not addressing. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Kenzandokki, <coughs> 4 billion will be injected uh, in the financial institutions, and some of these institutions are under DHI. So how much of a role that DHI is playing uh, in trying to execute this economic stimulus plan for now? Last, um, thank you, Dawa. Uh, before I answer the question, I would just like to take this opportunity to actually uh, thank, the uh, thank and uh, congratulate the government on their economic stimulus plan, uh, and especially because they have been able to secure the funds required for the ESPS grant. Uh, now, as far as uh, involvement of DHI in the uh, uh, formulation of the plan and in the implementation of the plan, of course, the formulation part, it was during the political campaigning stage and all that, so uh, we were not involved. Now, in the implementation, uh, also, I think, uh, as of now, I don't recall having any discussion with the government on the uh, implementation side. But having said that, we have uh, had the opportunity to look at the economic stimulus plan. And the way we see it, I think, uh, uh, it's good because, like you mentioned, the four billion uh, is being injected into the banking sector. Now, when you talk about the four billion injection, we are talking about injecting it as capital deposits, and uh, 
BUB actually is a subsidiary company of DHI, and it's one of the biggest financial institutions in this country. So we do see a lot of benefit flowing to DHI also because of this economic stimulus plan, because now BUB will be a much stronger bank for because of the economic stimulus plan. Yes, yes, yes. Mr. Samjam, sir, now one of the serious beneficiaries of this uh, ESP would be the private sector. And you already mentioned about the government's concern in developing private sector. Are you receiving proposals? Are you receiving some kind of proposals from the private sector? Because we tried to get uh, some uh, individuals to represent the private sector, but we couldn't manage to get anyone. So from you, we would like to hear. Well, <clears throat> The thing about this economic stimulus plan is one thing that we need to be very uh, clear is that it is going to be, uh, the loans are going to be given in the productive sector. So the task force is already working hard on prioritizing which sectors to uh, target first. And then also like the task force, I believe, is already working on the implementation uh, framework. So once that is done, I think, uh, uh, DHI and banks will be, and then RMA will be involved more fully so in the discussion. Productive sector, meaning now people are looking uh, for loans, for construction, for v uh, procuring vehicles. Now, are these areas to be considered or you're just trying to focus on the productive sector, meaning these areas will not be considered? I think the, I mean, like the priority will be set. I, I think like you can't exclude any sector fully, but uh, in terms of priority, I think what, we, that what the government might do is uh, go into the manufacturing sector, which produces products which would substitute for the imports that we do from India, yes, number sir. one. Number two is, I think, a sector which generates a lot of employment will be looked at. And then number three is, uh, I think uh, they're also looking at uh, rural uh, enterprises now, where we can re uh, revive and renew uh, our economic development in the rural sector, which is really a big problem that's been created through urbanization. Yes. So we're looking at those things. And uh, the other thing is also like, uh, because of the last two years, when you look at it, then I think now the whole nation is aware of how fragile and vulnerable our economy is. We've always said that hydropower is the answer to a lot of things. But when you look at it carefully, hydropower contribute 17% of the GDP, okay, in terms of growth. But if you look at, uh, on the other side, it hardly generates any jobs. In the economy, job creation is one of the most important uh, aspects. So uh, that's why it's important for us also to diversify and not put all our eggs in one basket. So that's why the government is now also coming up with uh, the, the plan to do a proper study on the private sector development. And over there, I think a lot of uh, importance will be given to small businesses, small enterprises, innovative sector. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, our first caller online. Hello. 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 Are you there? OK, we lost our caller. Hydro power sector. Yes not being one of the sectors that would uh, generate job opportunities, would you agree? Well, uh, not entirely true, but uh, considering the amount of investment that we are carrying out in the hydropower sector, if you expect uh, a linear growth of job opportunities, then yes, I think the relationship is not exactly linear. But the fact is currently hydropower sector does contribute to 17% of the GDP, which is the highest. Agriculture is only about 13%. Then, as I said earlier, transportation is about 10%. So hydropower is here to stay, I think uh, this is one area uh, where, uh, of course, there has been a lot of debate on, on the uh, sustainability and how the number of jobs are being created. But if you really look at it, the fact why transportation has gone up, why transportation is contributing to 10% of the GDP is also because of hydropower. And also the fact that construction is also contributing to more than 14% of the GDP is also because of hydropower. So therefore, there's no denying the fact that hydropower is playing a major role. If it is not directly contributing to job creation in the powerhouse, but then it's contributing to number of growths of 7,000 of uh, heavy transportation vehicles outside. And it's also contributing to so many uh, subcontractors and so on. So I think to get back to the uh, whole issue, I feel that, yes, we do need to look at the 
uh, productive sector as a, you know, a long-term plan of the 11 five-year plan, which is already there in the 11 five-year plan, we do need to encourage uh, import substitution. But I think the immediate requirement of the day is to help these construction industries. Immediate requirement of the day is to help these transportation industries because since they are con uh, contributing 10% to 13% together with the hydropower, contributing to almost 45% of the GDP. So if you don't energize them, if you don't give them the working capital they need, if you don't give them the uh, bank guarantee that they require to compete in a tender process, if you don't give them this uh, uh, the, you know, the, the cash that, that is required for them to keep their services flowing, then it will be difficult to actually yes. uh, keep the economy going in Yes, sir. Thank you, Ola. Okay, Ola. Uh, a caller on line. <coughs> Hello, Ola. Hello. Okay, could you please introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Tanin from Tongsala. Yes, sir. And I have a lot of questions, but I'll just give a brief question on my view. Actually, GDP, 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 the memo, GDP, yes, we say GDP. Did any, or either it is a DPT or a PDP, ever thought of civil servant striving with the present salary? Any question, Anila? Okay. Um, any question that is related to ESP, that's Economic Stimulus Plan, other than civil servants' uh, salary and uh, other issues? La? Oh, no, economic stand, it's quite, I mean, no, 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 the needs of civil servants, and that has already played on inflation. That uh, is the talk of the town. So, any well, correlation that you'd find? Less, uh, not maybe not directly, but then like we uh, that the uh, new government has amend, uh, has pledged to increase their salary as well as to look at the housing um, uh, housing you know the percentage of you know like uh, covering percentage of the housing rent. And uh, once we do that, I think, you know, economic stimulus plan usually, basically, is nothing but to increase the spending level in the market. So if you increase more money uh, through increase in civil service salary, I think that will indirectly help the economy. Yes. But you inject more money into the market, that would, in fact, encourage more imports, as it is export is always less. So that would encourage more export, meaning, again, we are somehow or the other we are going to face this rupee situation again, don't you think so? In the short term, short term it is true, it's going to happen because we have no other options, no other alternatives. But at the same time, the government, what it wants to do is like uh, import substitution is going to be one of the major, major uh, important sector that we're going to look at. Okay. And uh, like last time, uh, our Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister, State of the Nation report in the speech, he came up with that program Let's build our own homes. Let's yes. build. Let's grow our own food. These are all to do with import substitution, and uh, through fiscal measures, through many other subs, uh, like uh, incentives and other measures, I think the government is going to do that as a, one of the most priority area. Yes, sir. Thank you. Another caller on line. Hello. 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 Your introduction, Hello. please. Yes, I am Pemo from Timbu. Yes, sir. Uh, the question that I want to ask is. Uh, we all know that uh, tourism uh, is the second highest revenue on, uh, after electricity. Okay. And it is the highest uh, in terms of uh, foreign currency. And, uh, and the tourism, again, is the, uh, employs the most number of people in the country. Yes. But sometimes I wonder why so little is being done for tourism and so little is being invested in the tourism industry. Yes. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, maybe I can put this to Mr. Kinsanth of uh, You said you went through the draft plan of economic uh, stimulus, draft, uh, of, uh, uh, draft document of the economic stimulus plan. Any mention of uh, tourism industry? Um, currently, if you look at the economic stimulus plan, uh, what it basically tells you is how the money is going to be injected into the financial system. But it doesn't talk about where the money is going to go. So it talks about priority sectors, productive sectors. 
and it talks about general objectives that it, want to, it wants to achieve la, in terms of job creation, youth employment, and all that. La. So coming back to your question and the caller, question from the caller, I think uh, there is a convergence la, because one of the most uh, um, promising sectors that we have uh, at this stage is the tourism sector. La. I think it might be the only sector that will see some, or rather, let's say, a good growth in the next five years. La. So if you think about that, I think the government will focus on the tourism sector because the potential to earn um, uh, dollars, the potential to create jobs is the highest currently in the tourism sector. Okay. Uh, Mr. Samjam, sir, uh, would you just, if you had to supplement to what Mr. Kinzan Dogdi just said? Plus, uh, personally, the tourism, tourism sector is very close to my heart. La. Because yes. I also earn my livelihood basically through tourism. And I have uh, been a tour operator. I've been also a tour guide uh, even during my college days. So uh, this is one sector that I think in our country, uh, this is one sector which touches so many people yes. and provides and supports livelihood to so many people in terms of being guides, in terms of being tour operators. Tour operators are basically very small businesses. Anybody can today start a tour business. Any ordinary person can start a store business. So yes. this is something that really touches and has a wide impact. So and it's the, definitely yes. a productive sector. And then the other thing is this, has a, this sector has a multiplier impact. Yes. Like because of tourism, if it grows, it also uh, has a lot of impact in the hotel industry, uh, in the arts and crafts industry, horse contractors. In the villages, we can buy uh, all these vegetables. You know, so many other things it touches now. So it is a very important sector. And again, if you refer to the Honorable Prime Minister's State of the uh, Nation speech, you'll see that tourism is going to get a lot of priority. Yes. And uh, basically, in the economy, like as our colleague here uh, from DHI mentioned, the ESP doesn't have right now, you know, doesn't list out those priority areas. But I think tourism will be there. Yes. And beyond that, in terms of the overall economy, I think uh, it is very clear from our Prime Minister's State of the Nation speech la, that the government wants to work with the private sector. La. You bring up ideas, you, you bring up you know, like, uh, new innovation, the government is going to go full out supporting la, because that's how we uh, fundamentally build our economy. La. No, sir. Okay, another caller on that. Hello, Ola. Hello, Ola. Do we have a caller online? Hello, Ola. Hello, Ola. Yes, sir. Hello. Okay, we are listening to you, sir. No, uh, from Yes, sir, sir. And my question is about uh, what are the strategies that uh, government, uh, new government is taking in order to promote the small-scale industries? Yes, sir. Especially the construction side. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Lovzong. Oh. Thank you for your question. Uh, Mr. Samjam, sir? <coughs> You're talking about productive uh, yes. sector, yes. and construction definitely would be considered yes. as yes. one of the productive yes. sectors. Yes. Uh, in the construction sector and also in the transportation sector, like maybe there's a misconception. Uh, I think construction and transportation sector, transport sector, like when it comes to doing it as a business, is a productive sector. Okay. So, but if you are building your own house, or if you are buying your personal car then you know, the money gets stuck and it uh, you know, like doesn't produce anything. So that we have to differentiate. Yes. Otherwise, be, besides that, I think we are looking at, the government's looking at this, uh, a strategy in which all other sectors, construction is a very important sector, are looked at. And especially the government wants to look at how we can you know, um, increase uh, our contractors' involvement in the hydropower sector. And how we can also try to create more jobs through the hydropower sector. Yes. So these, these things are going to be looked at. And as I said, that private sector development uh, policy, they're going to work on that very, very diligently. And in there, uh, a lot of importance will be given to small, uh, small businesses, small startup businesses, small inter uh, like young entrepreneurs coming into and starting their own businesses. These things will be encouraged and the government is, I think, even looking at how they are going to go proactively yes. in supporting them. Okay. Uh, Mr. Yes. Kingasari, now, one concern that uh, you raised uh, during the session and even 
uh, at the outset of English session was that uh, people are waiting for loans to complete their construction work, so, which are left halfway. Mm -hmm. Some of them are left halfway. So just hearing to what uh, Mr. Samjam said, priority should be given to the productive sector. And your area of concern may not necessarily be a productive area. So well, I what think, do you think? Uh, uh, as the caller has uh, asked, the small-scale industries, SMEs, um, as shared by Mr. Sunam, uh, small-scale industries are identified as priority sector, and small-scale industries are made up of not only the handicraft manufacturers and so on, but also, I think, the construction sector. There are a lot of players in there. As far as I can remember, over 3,000 licenses are issued in the small-scale industry under the construction sector. And I come back to the figure, la. their contribution to GDP is again 13 to 15 percent. So you cannot ignore them, as the caller has mentioned. And I think they are the ones who keeps the intermediary of economy functioning. Because you need to buy the village product, you need to have people who buy the village product. And I think they are contributing in that situation way. So therefore, I think uh, in every country, SMEs play a vital role. Even in economic powerhouses like Germany, uh, some of the most famous uh, uh, you know, uh, schemes which provide job is, uh, for example, Faber Castle, who manufactures pencil. And they are focusing on those small scale industries because they are the ones who are really keeping the people employed. Session away. On the tourism, I also have my comment. 2013-14 uh, budget has only about 180 million uh, new term la, for the tourism sector. And I think that is too small considering the fact that tourism is contributing in a huge manner. By the way, in the GDP calculation is not mentioned. La, so therefore, tourism is thrown around in some other headings. So therefore, we have no means of finding out. But on the other hand, everybody knows. And I think government has to allocate a huge chunk of budget for tourism, especially for marketing. For example, we expect a lot of people from Korea to visit. Japan, uh, after visit of His Majesty the King and uh, his, uh, Her Majesty the Queen, we had huge inflow of people coming in. La. So in other places where I think um, the, that was not possible, we need to you know, spend on marketing because uh, website, uh, brochure, everything has to be done in local language. La. Yes. Korean people are not going to read English. Now the third one is I would like to point out that there may be a correlation here. Uh, as somebody has raised the increase of civil service uh, uh, salary. La. This, I think, in the parliament also we have uh, been uh, discussing, getting a lot of ideas, and government has promised that they will be raising the issue because they're playing a key role in the whole mechanism of bureaucracy. And if you look at the GDP figure, January 2011, civil service, uh, service salary has been increased by 20%, and GDP went up <laughs> by about 1% to 2% because it falls under the community and social service and, and government uh, expenditure. And 2012, surprisingly, uh, GDP has come down to 4.62. And if you look at that, under that heading, the GDP uh, contribution has also gone down by minus 1.5. So I don't know whether that's due, due to some austerity measure or, uh, or any other uh, you know, factor which I'm not able to really correlate in a way. So therefore, I think these are some of the things we need to look at. And in the agriculture sector, one thing is, so far, we have always been focusing on the subsidy on the input side. We are providing machinery, we are providing seeding, seedlings, we are providing pumps, we are providing water. La. But how does it reflect to the productivity on the other side? I think what now we should focus on through the stimulus plan, if possible, do, with the Pinsman Soba Economic Action Plan, we had a subsidy component for price support. La. So we are not saying, we are not telling the farmers what to do, because they are the best. They are knowledgeable in the field, and actually they can teach us what to do. La. What we have to promise them, we will say is, if you produce two kgs of rice, uh, X amount of rice, we are going to buy it. We will provide you price support so that you don't go into loss. And I think this is the kind of price support and subsidy element that we need to put in the ASP session. Okay, la. thank you. Uh, another caller online. La. Hello, hola. Hello, good evening, Dawa. Good evening, sir. Uh, uh, Karma from Paro. Okay, sir. Uh, uh, my question may be for both the uh, PDP and DPD panel members there. Uh, I just would like to know what, uh, what are included in the ESP, especially the in-country manufacturing uh, industries. What are the direct supports that they are thinking of? And uh, if the in-country manufacturing uh, sectors are not included into the productive sector, then uh, what would be the situation for the small-scale in-country manufacturing, especially furniture, uh, like maybe other, other, other small-scale uh, manufacturers in the country? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, since the question is, uh, I know it's put to both PDP and DPT, but uh, maybe you have been silent for some time, Mr. Kisnath, okay. That's Why don't you take a chance to respond to this? I think his question is uh, what's ha going to happen in the manufacturing sector and what's there in the ESP as far as manufacturing sectors are concerned. I think uh, we can only deduce, la, basically deduce from the objectives that are given in the ESP. And the objectives that are given in the ESP is quite clear. La. We talk about productive sectors. 
And manufacturing sector is one sector that would be considered generally productive sector because it, um, you, our export earnings go up because of that particular sector. So I would think that uh, while uh, we have still uh, yet to see the real implementation document and where the money is going to go and how much what sector is going to get, I would be very surprised if the manufacturing sector uh, is also not there. But if you think about manufacturing sector for a, for, for a little while, uh, manufacturing sector generally in Bhutan tends to be power intensive sector. But uh, unfortunately for us, I think we have uh, no more power uh, as far as uh, the capacity is concerned. We have what we call firm power and beyond that firm power, we don't uh, allow industries to be set up. So there might have to be some, I think, uh, think through when it comes to this particular sector. It might not be a sector that we'll have to, uh, that we'll have to promote immediately. It might have to come later because there is no power such in Okay. Okay. Briefly, sir, because we have a call of waiting. I think uh, in the manufacturing sector, as Kinsang has shared, uh, number one is the power availability. And number two is, of course, manufacturing, again, is contributing a huge portion of the GDP. And I think here, one thing we need to look at, two areas where we are spending a lot. One is the manufacturing where it's very capital in intensive. Other one is the infrastructure development. And here, I think one option is not only through ESP, but we really need to attract FDI Sushunwela. Foreign direct investment has to be attracted. It has to be encouraged. Doing uh, business in Bhutan has to be uh, eased out. Enabling environment has to be created. La. And I think this is the solution to getting big uh, ticket capital inside the country. Okay, la. last caller. Hello, hola. Hello, hola. Okay, sir, Hello. Hello, questions. Good evening, la. Good evening, sir. Uh, I'm uh, Yuntin from Mongol. La. Okay, sir. Uh, my uh, question is regarding the unemployment is Yes, sir. Uh, uh, present government has a very much good idea and a plan to give the stipend to the unemployed one. Yes. So it would be given. So how it would be given the stipend? So do we need to follow any like the formalities? And uh, the moreover, the, what I feel is that if like such uh, unemployment is given to our the productive citizen. The, 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 the most un, uh, unemployed ones are the, the uh, younger generation only. Yes. I think that they would uh, hamper the, the economy of the country also. So I think that's the only thing. Okay. Uh, Mr. Hendon, thank you so much for your question. Uh, let me put this to Mr. Samjam Sola. Now, $4 billion is going to go to the financial institutions and $1 billion is going to go to the sectors that uh, we just mentioned. One is unemployment to solve un unemployment problems. Now, when you talk about unemployment problems, are you going to take care of the allowance that uh, he just mentioned as well? Well, basically it's that. The four billion which is going to the financial institutions are going to create businesses, are going to create businesses. And then in terms of prioritizing, I think the government's going to look at those sectors which are going to bring in a lot of employment. So, you know, so unemployment is being solved in that in that junk, yes. no, not in the one billion. I think yes. one billion one has a small program, which will support people who uh, are in between before they get in, un employment, and if they are, they have to wait, and then if they like, depending on their economic situation, like it would, I think they'll have some criteria, like not everybody can get it, but somebody who is looking for a job and who has no support here in the place they're waiting, so. So there, I think there will be a small fee that uh, the government would provide. Okay. Uh, yes. So maybe, uh, Mr. Samjam, sir, briefly, what are the activities that uh, will be taken care of within this one billion? Briefly. Mm. Briefly, it's a, basically it's a, a special support scheme, and um, here one is uh, subsidized uh, students' loan. Okay. People who can't, uh, who has to, you know, study, uh, paying themselves not in the government institutions. Number two is um, like elderly care, like people who have nobody to look after them, and then like elderly people who have problems yes. supporting their life. And then the third one is employee uh, em employment benefit scheme. Yes. So these are the three, I think, main ones. Okay. Yes. Mr. King, sir? On the unemployment issue and then the education issue where the one billion is allocated, uh, I think this is a well thought of uh, area session because uh, education, when you look at it, 20 percent of the people who are doing diploma certificate are studying outside of Bhutan. 45 percent of the people who are doing their degree or beyond their degree, they are studying outside Bhutan. So therefore, they do need uh, some sort of uh, uh, financial aid and component to, to be able to go and study outside. And I think this number is only going to go and increase. 
And then uh, similarly, I think uh, on the un unemployment, uh, we know that within the next five years, there will be over 150,000 youth who will be coming on the job market. La. So I think uh, in, the, in our initial manifesto plan, we had this uh, drawn out again over the next five, so five years on how to meet that employment uh, need. And currently, we are also having a lot of inquiries on that. A lot of people are interested in how the employment will be uh, generated and immediate need, as uh, mentioned by Mr. Sonam, uh, Secretary General here, they are interested in the unemployment benefit, like, even if it is 3,000 or 4,000, how do we avail of that? I already have uh, a few uh, applications uh, with me, which uh, you know, they have requested me to take to the government and see how they can help out Sushun Vela. So, But overall, I feel that these are some of the areas which are very critical need people uh, under uh, Big Kidu. And I feel that, as I submitted in the earlier session, uh, if this can be monitored as part of the Kidu Fund uh, from the Zimbabwe's office, it is already being done from the Association of Vela across all the country. And I think this will be a very efficient way of utilizing this. La. Okay. Mr. Kanjan uh, let me throw you the same question that I asked you during Zonka session, and this will be our final question. Yes. The sustainability issue, forget uh, 4 billion, 1 billion, that is going to go to support schemes. One should be worried about this 1 billion, because only those people who are currently going to avail these services will benefit. But once this one billion is finished, you'll again have to wait for aids and grants from other countries, or else the program is going to end there. So this would be a concern. Yes, um, definitely. I share that in the Zonghal session also. That is definitely a concern. And this is, again, my personal opinion on this uh, subject. Uh, we are trying to start a social welfare system uh, based on grant money, and I find that concerning. That is mainly because uh, uh, what do we do after the, the money runs out? Um, what kind of pressure now new political parties will start having, you know, in terms of supporting and continuing these uh, schemes? So that's just my personal opinion. But uh, bef before we conclude, uh, just take this short opportunity to also uh, tell the viewers about what DHA is also doing uh, yes. in terms of uh, what we're doing in this uh, to help this economy. Uh, uh, I'll mention this very quickly. Uh, firstly, what we are doing is we, for all our projects, uh, we are trying to raise the capital from uh, outside Bhutan. La. So what that means is basically we are trying to make our projects as balanced or payment neutral as possible. In the case of Dongsam, we have to even pay higher interest rates, la. two billion we borrowed from uh, Indian financial institutions at higher rate, la. just because we had a big problem within the country. La. The other thing is even the future projects, we are uh, again looking for FDI partners and uh, debt from outside the uh, country. La. The other thing is on the entrepreneurship and uh, the funds that we are trying to set up. We are trying to set up uh, an IFC SME fund outside Bhutan for investments into Bhutan. The other thing is, of course, we are also now also uh, looking at uh, a possibility of setting up a few of an industrial bank in Bhutan. Yes. And that bank, we are thinking, will uh, raise all the capital that is required abroad, outside Bhutan, and then it will uh, lend it on a retail basis to industries within Bhutan. So these are the few things I just thought I'd take that opportunity to mention. Okay, Mr. Samjamso, Mr. King of Swing, and Mr. King of thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, well, this brings us to the end of the discussion, but uh, we would like to inform all our viewers that uh, discussions are not going to end here. It will keep going on because we need to come up with more follow ups on this ESP as well by involving those relevant stakeholders as and when possible. Thank you so much for watching People's Voice. It's time to say goodnight. Thank you.